Some, some adventurers must remain home this time to ensure that they do not dare to interfere with the rituals of the Faith of the Light. Okay. Which is an excuse I extemporized off the top of my head to justify why they are not here today. But I feel it will be suitable. Okay. Ross, tell us about Norbert. Hello. My name's Norbert. So, what happened was, I heard these stories about these um, tomb robbers, really. And um, <clears throat> you see, I've got this goat. I've been raising her since she was a kid. And she's quite ill. And uh, there's a woman lives in the village, says she can get it some medicine for some coin. So I need coin for my goat. I also am a fighter and I have eight hit points and 13 armor class and a pull arm and a short bow. Excellent combination. <laughs> uh, Magnus looks you up and down with slight regard and says, how much coin do you need? <laughs> no, no, sir. You don't understand. You see, my mom, she, t she always told me she said, she said, Norbert, whatever you take from the world, it's going to take back. So that's what my mom said. So I got to, I have to go get it myself. It's the only way to save, hey, Dwight, I don't to know save how you Rose. Possibly top this one, but I, I want to hear it. <laughs> Steve? Uh, what was that? Uh, so, tell us about Edwig. Um, <clears throat> so, Edwig, Edwig is a scruffy looking guy, um, about 5'7", a little bit on the wiry side, um, has a real scrapper build. Looks like he's seen his, his fair share, uh, fair share of, uh, fights. He's dressed in a pretty simple tunic, and, uh, I forget the word for him, he's just, just uh, trousers. Um, he's got uh, the 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 filthiest chainmail you've ever seen um, over top his tunic, um, and he's got a round shield strapped to his back, um, and he uses a spear like a walking uh, like a um, like a walking stick. Um, he's Shoot, I'm sorry, I'm totally freezing up on this. Um, you kind of get the impression he's sizing everyone up like a fight, all uh, like he's looking for a fight. Um, it's hard to tell if he actually is looking for a fight or if he's just mistrustful of other people. Um, he is, um, shoot. Could you describe the location real quick? I need to. I need to yeah. figure out why I, why he would be here. Well, the main re there are two main reasons to be here. Uh, one of them is to go quest against chaos on the border of the world uh, for religious or moral reasons, which is what drives Father Bloomad. The other reason is that chaos has money, a strange amount of buried gold and gemstones, which don't turn back into leaves or stones when you carry them home. They have an unnatural amount of wealth, which bold crusaders often hungrily covet and seek to plunder from their underworld tombs. And this is, need, uh, and this is, okay. We need power. Mm -hmm. Power to and, bring order to this place. Order and brings these, peace. And are these kind of more like the borderlands or anything like that? Very like... much so. We're on the far northeastern border of Albion, in a place which until recently was almost entirely uninhabited. A, over the past two years, a small settlement has sprouted up in the shadow of these great warlords, who drove back chaos and bandits, and established enough of a safety for people to you know, begin to set up farms and forestries and quarries in the region of Cadence Rest. If you turn your gaze to the roll 20, uh, you'll see a map produced of, of this area, produced by Ross, 
the far northern area, northeastern area you see is the peninsula, which you once knew in another life as Zelkor's Ferry, and here is named Caden's Rest for a man who died in its defense. Uh, to the most prosperous area is the peninsula, which has been very strongly shaped by the culture of the crusaders who helped found it, and thus is populated largely by people who are kind of fanatically religious in their defense of the faith of the light. And the surrounding area is much poorer, much less developed, but slowly developing as they and sustains itself on the industries of fishing, forestry, and some farming. To the e farther to the west, there are slightly less uh, chaos plague domains ruled by merchant lords, uh, who with whom the ruling council of the peninsula occasionally has some intrigues, but generally the two leave each other at a productive remove. They say they don't neither interfere with each other nor support each other. So it's like quite likely uh, your character could be a native who has decided to step up in defense of their home. They could be someone who came recently from afar, who is here for reasons of personal wealth or for uh, religious reasons, uh, or they could something else. Well, I don't know. Edric, I don't know is a, Edric is a Saxon name. Yeah, so. that's that's yeah, that's uh, and that's local-ish, right? That's not it's south local. of here, but close enough. Okay, close okay. enough to walk from like Northumbria. Mm -hmm. Ah, all right. Uh, yeah, you've got you've got the yeah you've got the right of it. I was definitely drawing from Saxon names. Um, the um yeah i uh he's definitely local ish um he's got to build a lot like a farmer um or what was once a farmer um given the given the kind of scarring and general um mistreatment that's a, that's obvious on his body he gets the sense he doesn't do, don't do a lot of farming anymore kind of has a build more like a local thug um he's one part Definitely one part in it for the money, and one part in it for the, um, not the Righteous Crusades so much as, well, these are, you know, this is the fight that needs to be fought. Sounds good. Now, this session, the caller is John Q. The responsibility of the caller is to establish consensus where necessary, and where the party is lacks any specific objection to simply drive movement forward. And so, in that spirit, I ask John Q, what is the plan today? Well, we are going into the bowels of the underworld. Are we not, my comrades? We're going back to a cavern under a bridge because we believe that some hooded evildoers raided our home from that place and we're going into the wasp's nest and we are going to spray it and cleanse it and purge it so we have a number of hirelings at our disposal and we're going to take them with us is uh is everyone ready do we need to do any other preparations i believe ross and edwig i believe edwig needs to purchase equipment but i'm prepared to backdate that is someone willing to assist uh, Steve slash Edwig in picking out equipment in chat, like in text chat? Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll post what I've got so far and what I'm eyeballing. All right. As long as you have some sort of reasonable selection of things, we're cool. But uh, try and get that done sooner than later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, All right. Voice voice chat, text chat, or uh, just other world adventures, text chat. Okay, okay. Actually, speaking of, uh, Ross, if you could give Steve slash Edwig access to the uh, Other World Adventures voice chat, we could just move it. He doesn't have access to that one. Okay. Oh, no. Many thanks. Oh, there we go. Yes, just a momentary hiccup there. All right. So, for Transit Overland, I believe you guys are planning... Oh, yes. Off we go. Oh. 
Now, if I'm not everyone here? Cool. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the plan is to once again use the keelboat uh, to the gorge, which leads into the depths of Rapanathook, south of the, just south of where the river forks. Uh, do I? Are you guys hearing Sounds some right. interference, or is it just me? Uh, Richard's coming through uh, a little bit staticky. Hmm. Yeah, it's only like on a... Richard for me. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah there's something. Here. Yeah. Fixable. Fixable. No big deal. Is it better? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, that's okay, better. Good. I've had that before. It's a simple thing. Uh, Steve doesn't have speech permissions here. Oh, goodness. Um, uh, Open one fence, find another fence. Speed here. Try now, Steve. No? Let me try something else. Silenced by otherworldly powers. The burden of the black sun. Crawler. Come here. Rapanothic. Okay, what about now? No? There we okay, go. Okay, there we go. Nice. <laughs> now. John Q, do, am I, do I correctly surmise that you are once again taking the keelboat? We are, we are, we need it, yeah. Okay. Now, if I remember correctly, the journey from, by keelboat from, uh, Cadence Rest to the Riverside Gorge entry to Rapanathook takes about one day. And in the tradition of this game, we roll our random encounter checks in the open. So let's see what we get. Everyone boards the keelboat, which includes all the mercenaries you're bringing with you and the crew. So, let's see. Let me pull up the relevant charts. Okay. So you leave at 9 a.m. You are fortunate. No horrors befall you on your trip, on your trip down river. One more. The journey is pleasant, as insofar as any journey dappled by dread as this one can be. No beasts spy upon you from the northern or southern shores. No mad wizards slinging fireball? Yes. Though you can never truly feel safe once you leave the bounds of Caden's Rest, neither are you. Neither does that terror come to fruition. Where is... Here we are. There we go. How long a trip is it? It takes roughly a day. You leave early in the morning, and you arrive at about midnight. It's a swift flowing, swift flowing river, and your or and the or the rowers work very hard, as they have grown very familiar with these sorts of horrors that can unfold in this place. And we agreed, I think, to take the northern shore again because we would sort of cleared it before. Or did we want to? Yeah, I think we should stick with those side we've already been working on. Yeah. My token doesn't have uh, visibility. How do I set that? Nor do I. Uh, uh, what you could oh, do... 
That's because I don't think your uh, tokens are here right now. One moment. I have a solution. Quick solution to that. Da da. Da da. Yeah, the reason your to your token has no visibility is because it cannot see. One moment. Wait. Five seconds. Is this legible? All of your tokens should be on the. Should all be here. Oh, uh, it's lighting has vision. Save settings. Sometimes, what uh, if you set like one of the ones with light to all players? Um, that way, then everybody will just see whatever that light source is. On the right. Vision. Save settings. When you say all players, what does that mean exactly? Um, if you go into the settings for the token in the bottom left, it'll say visible by, and you can go to the top of it and it'll say all players. And that way, you know, whoever's carrying the torch, everybody will be able to see from that, from that token. Okay. Visible by advancing, uh, which it's not under GM notes, it's not under details. Uh, let me. Token bar options, token aura. Sorry, it's because there's new tokens, isn't it? I think, it, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Trying to emulate the settings I see in others yeah. on other tokens. Oh, roll 20. <laughs> roll 20. Come on, roll 20. I'm also trying to like re reload it now. Oh no, it's got me on the wrong page. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, we're in the cavern. I yeah, that's where I've moved you to at the moment. Uh, uh I'm wondering. Um, uh, like can't get control. Uh, because Bloombad has light, right? Like that, everybody should be able to see. So if I go to yes. his his token settings, it says represent character. If you go instead up to the top and like all players, uh, or none. I'm sorry. If you go to none. Then you could be controlled by all players, and then, oh, okay. and then, bam! Like everybody now, of course, everybody can move him, but that's a, it's just a quick fix, so you don't have to change all of them. And and Magnus should also have a continual light object that I provided for him. Yes, controlled by all players. Save settings. Save settings. Oh, I wonder what it was. Yeah, I mean, I did that for you and uh, all the other players before we got the new guys. Now I've got to decide. Okay. Who can see and who can't see? I can I see. Am able to see. Okay, I all can, you guys can, I can see? see? Okay, yep. cool and good. I'm going to nip off for about one and a half minutes to go to the restroom. I'll be right back. This place is awfully creepy. Do me a favor, my friend. Uh, don't stand right in the front. Oh, right. All right. He, like, shuffles back, you know, a couple of ranks back, everybody. So it seems to be the problem with your goat. <laughs> it's the stomach worms. Oh, take care of that tomorrow. Wow. He's, he's in awe, yeah. Now, now he just needs to escape this hellscape. I'll probably retire him. All his goats get saved. <laughs> it's not a hellscape yet. No. I'm in danger. Uh, plus 5% XP bonus.
I return and thank you for your patience. So, a day-long journey downriver on a swift-moving keelboat to the north, the dense swamps of the, of the Dragon Marsh Lowlands. To the south, across a broad river, you can see the forests and hills of oh, the Forest of Hope. And then, in the late evening, The late evening, you arrive on the southern shore of. Let me go back to the overland map. On the southern shore of the Great River to the. that runs east west, where there is a southern branch that goes into a deep gorge. Now, from here, you must beach your boat and likely make camp as it's midnight. Unless, of course, you wish to run into the dungeon right now with no rest after a full day's travel. I imagine we would want, we'd want to rest a bit. We probably helped out a little bit <clears throat> with Thornton's duties as captain. Indeed. And Inwig uh, drops his pack and just, he just looks around saying, I'm I'm all for fighting. I'm all for knowing when to fight. Goat herder, can you make a fire? Do we want fire? Oh, speaking of that, did somebody smell that? He sniff, sniffs there, and, and then he looks over into the the sun setting on the grass, and there's just like piles of rotted carcasses that have been scorched. And he's like, oh wait, no, that's the other side of the bridge, maybe. Is it? No, it's remember. the south side. It's like, what, what in light's name is that? That would be ah, the yes. trolls and the ants and what? the goblins. Ants? I what, suppose like, there's only one goblin. Yes. What? Like, like ants? Ants. You've seen ants. Those don't look like ants. Now, much of the... Uh, scorched and flame wrought. Okay, so last session, uh, there was a tremendous conflagration that was set here, and you can see the residue of that forest fire, along with a great deal of remnant corpses of uh, mostly of large rat creatures. And when I say large, I mean tremendous, larger than a hunting dog, almost the size of a horse. However, they've also all been gnawed almost to the bone, so that nothing remains of them but, you know, bleached white skeletons that have been gnawed down to tendon and bone and ligament, with a few stray strands of intestine lingering among them. But the scavengers of the forest have not been idle, and the residue of your great war is now ashes, and an is now an ossuary of ashes and bone. Both kill uh, Norbert pan with panic and nervousness struggles to take a flint and stone and light a fire as you command uh, amongst the carcasses of these mutant beasts. Worry not about the smell, my friend. That is the smell of victory. There would be more corpses piled here before the day is done. Speak not words of omen. Not our corpses. More dog, dog-sized beasts. The, the, the place is lousy with these vermin, and we will cleanse it. Fear not. Just stand in the second rank. Do, do you have a weapon? Did you bring something you can poke with? On. That's very good. The, sur the other survivors of the expedition last week. All f Let's see, who else has come? Checking the roster. Yes, Katroin Damhate Tabharku, Isnin, Frangad, Now, Mudegan. Four wizards, two strong fighters, and one holy man have come along with you. And they merrily, uh, they merrily poke fun at the novices and their fear in the face of great of these strange mutations of chaos and the horrors that unfold from these forests. Though a keen-eyed man might sense that they are doing this as much to assuage the fear in their own heart as for any amusement. Did Mordagion come by any useful 
items or artifacts by hanging around with Ullman? He has a sensation that he learned something of importance, but he can't remember what it was. What he did learn is this. Ullman can drink you under the table. Reliably. Every single time. I, I thought as much, yes. And he will have a wonderful time doing so. He suspected that his drink was spiked with some un with some exceptional toxin that only Ullman knows the formulation of. Yeah. Mordagion was interested in sympathetic magic because he's not as advanced as Magnus and these... But he thought maybe if he could strike from a distance, he was, he was hoping, he's hoping to be on the lookout for that kind of thing. He may well learn something from Ullman, but he suspects that it will never be as a teacher and a student, but whether as a man might learn something from paying close attention to the stars or a storm. Ullman is simply not a creature that holds truck with such things. All right, you rest through the night, a fitful night's rest, holding watch as, as is necessary. But take, hell, take heart, a good omen. Nothing bad happens. There are, you, no horrors lurch from the forest to assail you. No great beasts crawl from the water to drag you into it. No moss men loom from the swamps with blade in hand and hungry jaw. No, you... Dream fitful dreams and then awaken in the morning, quite rested and ready. This is a good faith. sign. It, it is. is a, and, it's a propitious hour. Ready to face the madness that, that lurks upstream. Now, the water flowing, as we mentioned, the. Let me draw a quick sketch. You can all see clearly on the map, yes? The overland map that shows the fork in the river. Now, the water flows, I'm going to make some quick sketches, in this direction, and this direction, and this direction, the shallow lake. There is also a gorge running from within the forest, sorry, running from within the, there is a gorge which branches south, from which water flows from south to north. So you must beat your boat, step aside, Pick one side of the pick one side of the small gorge river and walk upstream as the as the faces of the canyon rise higher and higher alongside you. Great barren great barren walls of stone that rise higher and higher and higher until like a great cathedral vault they enclose you. And the light of the sun falls behind you, and a strange air begins to fall, upon, fall upon you. The air begins to seem thick and heavy, and the presence of darkness begins to feel less like an absence of light, and more like the presence of something hazardous and unholy. Is it dark enough that we need light to light something? And soon it is. I, I suggest that we light as little as possible. You want possible? to use your... Can you use your magic light to on, on dim, as it were? <laughs> but I guess that's the question. Um, the, the light does not hide itself. We're here to extend the light. Unfortunately, yes, there is. I... It is true. There is no way to obfuscate the holy power of the light. It yearns to be known. At least, it will not hide on its own accord. But you can swaddle it in cloth to dull its light to a modest glow, enough to light your footsteps and prevent your light from shining brightly across the rooftops of the cavern. Well, now, the how cavern... will we see the bat monsters if we don't let the light shine on the ceiling? That's a <clears throat> compelling question. You are faced with a conundrum. Do you prioritize your ability to see or your ability to not be seen? For now, let me continue the description. The vaults of the cavern above you recede past visibility. They extend at least a hundred feet into the air. Behind you, the light of the sun seems farther than it should be, as though light does not wish to carry in this place. It's an uncanny sensation that darkness looms close to you, 
every everywhere around you, and does not merely wish. To, it is not merely an absence of light, but it presses close, closer. It is held at bay, just barely, by the radiance of your magical illuminations and the torches that you and the torches that you carry. Should your magic fall to your you can't south, here it's back. More or less, to your south. Now you can come in on either side of this river, but once you're there, crossing the river becomes difficult because although it is not not so fast moving, it is ice cold waters from the very depths of the earth, cold enough to chill a man to the bone in moments. And though you might be able to swim across it, you certainly could not swim across it in your armor. And if you fall within it, you'll have a you'll you may have a great, very difficult time getting across. And worse, you may simply freeze to death, dying not at the hands of chaos, but at the uncaring darkness of the world below. So do you want to come in on the w west side, which you have explored somewhat, or on the east side, which you have not explored? Either one could be safer or more perilous, as the situation depends. Well, on which side is the cave tunnel that we saw those tall winged men scrabble it down into? Uh, I believe that was the west side, as that was the only one you've been in. Do I remember... Now, I remember that there were winged men who you saw clinging to the stalactites above you after your uh, confrontation with the, with the giant ants. And there was a brief communication between Magnus and them in the Cursed Tongue of Chaos. But I, I confess, I don't remember them scrabbling away into a tunnel. Do I? Uh, they did leave. They left they in a flew, certain direction. Yeah, they flew off in that ah, general direction. Yes, they flew off to the south and west for, on this map. And at some point, left. we saw an, a cave opening that looked like a maw into Rappanathuk, and that that is where we wanted, I believe, to to delve. Is yeah. is that right? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, that yes, you were following the river, uh, which led. If you go west from here, you'll reach a place where the river will lead down another tunnel, which you which seemed mild enough for you to traverse. If I remember correctly. Let me review my notes in briefly to make sure I do not mislead you. As in all things, I wish to speak only truth and never a mistruth. I will never lie to you. This is my gamer's oath. Yes. There is a passage in the left side of this map that can lead you deeper into the dungeon, or at least into a different part of the dungeon. Do we see any signs of recent um, activity since we were here? You spy upon the wall a point that seems bleached white, as though scored by some tremendous heat. But aside from that, no, no strong evidence here. Does that look familiar to you, comrades? To none, you have, most of you are not as finely attuned to your surroundings surroundings as perhaps uh, the absent ranger is but you've passed by this wall a few times and it would in the past it was not so brightly scored the inclination implication you get is that it was somehow blasted by a truly intense light and su such that the surface of the dark stone of this wall is bleached into an ashy pale but you have no idea what might cause such a thing such powers are foreign to you one of the strangenesses of the underworld. What do you make of it, Magnus? Powerful magic. Is that a warning to us, or it's nothing to worry about? The Magnus, means... I can say with truthfulness, it does not seem to carry any deep meaning. If anything, it seems, it reminds him more of how a bear might rub up against the side of a, of a, of a tree and mark it and say, "Hey, 
I've been here. Mm. Be mindful. I've been here. Not evidence of anything other than territorial behavior. Perhaps. Well, how are, how are we feeling, Goat Herder? That was also very scary. <laughs> I suppose we ought to just like, um, so would we go further into the dark hole? Is it is here? That... Have, have some, have some of my jerky. It will keep your strength up. All right. Do you mind? Do you not mind bear sign when you see it? I, I turn around. I see this big hulking guy who looks like he's going to kill us. I'm like, oh, uh, oh yes, sir. I, 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 no, I'm not afraid of bears. I just, uh, I, I know how to deal with whatever that is. Got this right here. Oh God, this is my, my dad's weapon. Now, a brief, a brief note on movement in this space. Uh, the, the slowest member of the party right now moves at a speed of nine, which is to say they move nine squares in combat. And outside of combat, they move, if I remember correctly, how fast is that? In some time. Base movement rate of nine, which is to say that outside of combat, they move 180 feet per turn. Oh. At exploration is, rate, right? Yes. Yes. Which effectively here means I'm going to say you can move one square each turn because each of these squares represents 300 feet. Pretty generous. I'm a generous man. <laughs> Shall we about it? Yes, let's move forward if that's cool with everybody, right? Mm -hmm. I'm for it. Did you, when you said squares, are we looking at... Or, I just have a black screen right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let me ensure that you got... Oh, wait. Are you sure? Zoom out a bit, because you should... I haven't changed the... I don't, ha I don't have grids, but I do see the token. Okay. Oh, yeah, the token. Grid, yeah, the grid. Yeah, the grid is small. Uh, if you go to the measurement tool, it should show you like the rough span of distances here. And th roughly, this is one grid square. So if you want to go from like here... That'll take you a few turns. Hmm. And if you ask, why does it take so long? The answer is simple. This is not a natural place. And unnatural, And there is an unnatural pressure which makes time move oddly. And distances shift and obscure. Does it smell better here than it did where the piles of corpses were? What is the smell in here? Let me think about that a moment. That's a good question. That's a good question. I want to reward it. To provide useful intelligence. The scent in here is... There is a distant and dry scent of rot. Like a forest after the rain has come and dried. The mushrooms have bloomed and fallen and living things have risen from the depths of the soil to pluck at the bodies of things that have fallen from trees and lay their eggs and let all the living creatures feast on that which has died. But above all else, there is the faint pale chalk smell of limestone and flowing water against which all lesser smells are but a backdrop, a faint intrusion onto the grand, silent smell of stone and lime. We're looking for something a little more... Oh... putrid. So, we need to get down out of these fresh, earthy smells. Yes, this um, place does not stink enough. Yes. Uh, who's, who's in the front with, with me? Excellent question. Uh, let me go to the uh, Rapanathuk page, or which is the the default starting page, and let's let me throw down a quick proposed uh, marching order. Now I assume Magnus is in the front, and Ulf Kell is in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Father Bloombad, do you like to be up front? I mean, I will. Um, I propose Edwig's in the back. 
Um, if only to only if only to cover the rear. He's not afraid to be up front, but we might as well have someone. We might as well have someone who can be the front line if our back line becomes the front line. Edwig, I think that was excellent. Bring your rotten chainmail and bring up the rear. (laughs) Edwig, do you have a bow? Uh, I have slings. Okay. I have a sling. And of course, there is a great host of magicians along with you, which I assume are staying roughly at the center of the formation. used to practice with this all the time on the farm. A strong sling is nothing to sneeze at. It can kill a man dead. Forth the hounds down into the bowels. Sounds good. Post this real quick for reference. Oh, that's a wonderful little picture. Did you just sketch that? That delights me. Ross's? Yes, Ross's picture. Yeah, Ross's looks great. Absolutely. This is the world's most alarmed man. (laughs) <laughs> he's he's so old and wise in all of his 19 years he's got a very strong beard if he's 19 years old <laughs> so I'm going to put um, the fighters both of my fighters under your command um, John oh okay are they are they um stout both have chain um or actually both have pole arms and short bows also so they're quite okay. sturdy all right it sounds now describe to me the path you are taking to navigate from your current location to the west and describe to me how you're handling the twin prong the dilemma of visibility versus invisibility I think maybe the stronger light should be in the back and just a little a little bit shrouded light up front I don't know just a compromise okay so we don't have like a beacon going well like, well the thing away. is it's gonna be yeah least, the continual light is 120 feet so, 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 so I, I don't want to overstress the point. I was just thinking. I mean, it's basically got to. I, I, it's got to be all or nothing. It's got to be like huddled around a little dim thing and taking, you know, careful steps, or just striding forward and saying whatever, come and get us. Did, did you cast it on a your staff or something? Yeah, it's on my staff. It's on Father Bloombad's holy symbol. It's on. I guess Algar's not with us. I think he was the other one that had one. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Algar had the glowing, the glowing golden spear. Yeah, oh, he had which, the spear. I mind yeah. you, I think Ulfkel uh, is equipped with that today. Oh, I, that doesn't that doesn't glow as much as this. Uh, no, that one's light, that one's though. a modest glow. Yeah. But it's you know it's it's good for close. Well, quarters, maybe fine. we could shroud the continual lights and just use the the gold spear then. Uh, just an idea, uh, just throwing it out. There. Yeah, I mean we, we saw the bat creatures up along the stalactites because of the continual light though. Okay. I know, I know. I mean, I'm willing to be over if... to be. I'm willing to be overthrown in this idea. I'm just. It's just yeah, they, they I... maybe they revealed themselves to us because we saw them. Nine yeah. Times. Well, it's on you, John. Um, I, I don't know. I'm just getting the feeling maybe we should um, dim, be a little bit more dim. So, does Golden Spear have a moderate kind of glow? Uh, yeah, it's a moderate glow. All of these things... Now, you do have one advantage. Uh, The floor here is uneven enough that oftentimes uh, you will be within a small... within a micro valley. So you will dip in and out of visibility. You will not always be projecting your light across the entirety of the cave. Mm -hmm. Father Bloombad, I defer to your holy wisdom. Please, how much light I mean, I'm I'm all for just leaving my own light out because you yeah. know I'm if he does, then I will the light. also. Yeah. Okay. I say all or nothing. Okay, so you want me to hold golden spear aloft to light the path? Well, I, I, I... <laughs> it's it's not bad. It does mean you can uh, avoid any slowdown for grappling with the shadows and moving it at full speed. The floor, as mentioned, is uneven. Uh, every surface, it seems, is encrusted with a thin layer of lichens and funguses 
in unusual and sprightly colors which only appear which are only really visible when you bring forth proper light most things here you imagine do not appreciate these colors as they do not see as men do so you progress to the you progress from east to west yeah, let it be do. so let me see if i can remember how to do this properly spend some half an hour navigating through this space and as you do see what if anything comes to trouble you in the darkness the smell of rot begins to rise from the south Let's see. Actually, no. One more roll here. John Q, roll a d6 to see mm. what disposition presents itself here. A d6, okay. Four? Is that it? That's quite good. That means you are not taken by surprise. From the south, you discover, you spy a, by the full radiance of your light and skulking at the edge of it you see inhumanish shapes, and from them comes an unwholesome scent of rot. One moment, I am checking how this is. There is a specific trick to this to determine the distance at which one of these encounters occurs. And it has been some time since I've gone through this procedure myself. Do you smell that, Norbert? Ready your halberd. At a distance of 120 feet, you encounter, you spy. A shocking host of, of abhuman creatures that crawl on hands and feet. Their bodies seem disfigured by long distance from the sun, and they flutter forth long and hungry tongues in the air. They peer at you from a distance, and then, eyes narrowed, hungry and heedless of the shape of your of your weapons, they begin to approach, covetous and hungry. They they reek of rot, and they instill within you within you, especially within the younger members of your party, a primeval dread that something unnatural and unholy approaches. What do you do? How many? Seventeen. So we have a, a bit, little bit of time. You do. They are they are at 120 feet range because you have lifted full light. However, they can they can close quickly. So decide quickly how you wish to handle them. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Mr. Ufkale, sir. Um, uh, and I I'm digging through my backpack. Um, they look hungry. Maybe, uh, maybe if we just give them what they want. I think there's too many. Uh, how big are they? How big, Richard? How big are they? They are no larger than any other man you've seen. They are mm. slightly. What is un most unnatural about them is their long and fluttering tongues. Do you think we there can take them, Bloombad? Yes, they are the undead. We have. To, we are forced to oh. destroy them just by their presence. Okay, we're not going to pacify them, Norbert. Put, put your backpack away. Get your halberd at the ready. Let's come on. Um, we are going to um, prepare, brandishing our weapons, sizing them up, picking opponents. Magnus, do you have a spell do you want to use? Um, well, uh, um, Aelin, or Aislin, or whatever that is, is going to use web. Uh, you want me to try and turn them? I've, me and the, my cleric attempt to turn them. You might not need to expend that spell yet. Um, yeah, good point. I'm just a little worried if they get through to us. Well, they're 120 yes, feet away. I mean, I'll, I I'll try turning, and then if they get through that, then you can web if you'd like. Yeah. All right. One moment. Bye. 
Continually, I underestimate the tremendous array of things one must remember at all times. Da, 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 da. There we are. If we have, um, do we have a, a, a round or so to fire at them? You do, but it's, uh, do I understand correctly, Heretic, that you are raising your holy symbol to try and ward them off? Yeah, I'm going to attempt to okay. turn and destroy them or whatever. Okay. Describe to me how you ward away these unholy creatures, because for you, against such powers as these, your success is assured. Yes, I hold up my holy symbol and I say, you cannot hide from the light, not even in these dark caverns. A great host of them immediately... The power of your light rises up, and they seem for a moment to be spotlit brightly within the, by your holy symbol. Several of them turn and cringe and flee away into the darkness, never to return. But others still remain, and they, it seems, are not so easily swayed. The power of the light is great, but finite, it seems. Now, roll initiative. How many remain? You count nine. Where do I find, where's the horror combat sound? Come on, come on. There we are. Shall I roll a d6? Please Richard. do. And I shall do so as well. House wins. The protagonists go first. They are at a distance of 120 feet. First, who wishes to cast a spell? Remember, if you start casting a spell, you don't get it back. Magnus, uh, heretic. Yeah, one second. I gotta look at a duration real fast. No problem. Aelin is gonna is gonna do web after all. Magnus I'm scattered is out standing you. Is, is the web gonna catch him? It certainly will catch some. I'm going to cast Protection from Evil on myself. Okay. And I will cast Magic Missile. Alright. They choose to cast no spells this turn. <laughs> Next phase. Movement or Missile Fire. They are 120 feet away, and they will begin to close at a rate of, if I remember precisely how ghouls work. Pretty fast. Yeah, they're pretty quick, but they're not insanely quick. No, they're not that fast. Okay. Well, everybody should be able to get some pretty clean shots on them in all this light. They close to it. They can close to within thirty feet. So, if it's this turn, you may either open fire with missile weapons, or you may close to melee. All of you should be within range to do either, which easily. So, uh, if you wish to close to melee, take your character and move them. If you wish to uh, hold back and do missile fire, do not do so. Can't see oh. any character. Uh, Richard, I got a character. question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm entirely wrong tab again. I'm still getting used to that. I, I can be on any tab, and you guys are on. John so, can, instead of moving, can I do missile fire and then do melee? Yes, but they will not close to melee with you this turn. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to sling a stone. Okay. I think all... Well, let's see here. Uh, what is the AC? Their armor class is... Something I should write down quickly. Their armor class is 13. Okay, yeah. No, I think all my shots missed. Unfortunate. I fire two missiles and miss. Unfortunate. Um, is it 2d20 for this system? Uh, for a sling, you want to roll 1d20. The reason we're rolling two is because you can get two bow shots off in, in a combat round. Uh, your, your sling strikes true. Roll 1d4 to determine damage. Uh, 
Okay. And, uh, can I attempt to turn them again, or do I get the feeling that they're too powerful? How does turning work? Is it once per encounter? I usually it's assume it's once per Sword, I Swords and Wizardry in... is very unspecific about that. Hmm. They say nothing. It just says, you have the, the cleric has the power to do this. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you so. can... When in doubt, as the book says, yes, you can attempt to turn again. All right. That is your... So I assume that is your spell cast? creatures. Okay. That is movement. No one is in melee. Everyone has done fire. Everyone has done missile fire. Wait, should I have done two of them? Uh, two shots, two bow shots if you're using bow. Oh, just a uh, sling. Once if you're using sling. And yeah. uh, I don't know who Frangag, and I'm trying to remember who Frangag and Naum's responsibility is. Frangag is Magnus, and Naum is also Magnus. I, I already those rolled are them. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right. In that case, let's see if you can, how many you can turn away this turn. Heretic? Actually, no. Let's do the magic missile first, as that's... Uh, the quickest spell. Oh, oh my. Check it out. 12. Very good. Magnus, roll your uh, magic missile. 12 damage. All right. That is enough to immediately strike down. The thing is, web goes off too. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, one sec. Uh, going to web these guys. It's 20 by, uh, 20 by 10. By 10. Can you see the blue lines? Yeah. Those guys are wet. Okay. This one is struck down. And this one is badly injured. All of them, all the survive, all those which are not. Uh, bound by the webbing. Turn heedless into the dark and sprint away to the south, howling, dripping ichor, from one of them dripping ichor. This one falls dead where it stands. These thrash desperately within the webs, struggling to escape. For the moment, you have reclaimed control of the situation. And allow me to adjust the music accordingly. Now, you have one dead ghoul, and five ghouls entangled in webbing. What is your intention? I'd like well, to I'm, decapitate I'm... these things. Yeah. It's like shaking. I would like to poke them with dark, with light golden spear. You may dispatch them at leisure. Norbert, as you approach them, you are repulsed by the revelation that these creatures must have once been men or like men. They regard you with uncanny human eyes, but the tongues which flutter from their mouths are long and ravenous and pale. And suddenly it comes clear to you as you approach that it is not tongues in their mouths, but maggots, long maggots which stretch forth hungrily in search of carrion flesh. It is, Don't look at it, Norbert. It is Don't a great reassurance it. as your spear takes hold and that writhing, and that writhing pillar of pale flesh is at last stilled and lays dead, as dead things ought. Bellscape enough for you yet, Norbert? He goes kind of crazy and starts hacking away at the thing. <laughs> he hates that. I hate this. This can't, this can't be. This, a thing like this, it can't be. He's like tripping over himself and getting gore <laughs> and mud all over him. Better have some grateful goats. Magnus, do me a solid and write down that the party has overcome 17 ghouls. Who did you, we, we just lost someone. Who we just lose? No, that was AJ. It's fine. Uh, in, in Adventures? Uh, yes. Or wherever it is that you see fit to take notes. Magnus, uh, should I have rolled for those fighters earlier? Uh... I didn't even think about uh, think about it. I, I I I'm willing to roll for their combat rolls. I just meant okay. you can you can feel free to place them however you feel um, they'd be I best. Got you. Yeah. Placed. What are their names? Uh, 
they should all be in the NPC retainers chat, and their names are Frangog and uh, Neve. So, uh, I, Neve is spelled N A O M H, and it's one of those exciting of Celtic names where, they got, <laughs> where there was really cre- there was a lot of creativity applied in how uh, they were transliterated into the English uh, <laughs> into the English alphabet. Huh. I like to spell it with a K N A V E. Now. As you approach, as you cling, as you, as you traverse along the northern walls of the cave, you spy something curious, which is to say there is a tunnel stretching deep, a small tunnel, a bit too short for a human, and no what, but shored up by sturdy pillars of some fungal wood. The, t- the tunnel appears 30 feet wide delves deep into the northern surface of the cave. And Do I recognize it, this pathway from my time in the fungus network? You do not, which implies to you very quickly that this is a place where no living fungus is, but rather where fungus has been repur- dead fungus has been repurposed as a structural material. Okay. Oof, Kale, this looks like someone made this. From, and critically, from deep within, you can hear the sound of of iron striking against stone. The creatures of the dark are very unoriginal, Norbert, and they take things and they fashion them as they as they can. It's catch as catch can down here in the underbelly of the world. Now I'm assuming for the moment that you are not approaching these tunnels. Not thrusting your light to the to the entrance of them, and are perhaps giving them a berth for out of concern of interfering with what lies within. But if you intend to do otherwise, let me know. Uh, out of character, I want to say hi. That's I'm just going to throw that out there. Out of character, I do too. <laughs> like turn turn the light up. Is that what you meant? <clears throat> like uh, say, like go up there and gently tap my halberd against this fairy mushroom door and say uh, hello is anybody home I, I don't mean to be rude uh, but um, w- we're not from these parts I don't One do moment. that <laughs> I don't do that but, no, yeah, no. But, but you want to and I respect that deeply <laughs> Magnus stops That's a you terrible <laughs> idea <Yeah. laughs> I totally submit uh, to Magnus and the others oh, <laughs> you meant you wanted to say hi yeah. is that what you meant yes I oh, to say I hi Okay. Uh, it's, it's it's a door. You said I thought it was a like an archway no. made of fun- fungal wood. No, what you? Let me clarify. It's a mining tunnel. It, it's clearly a mining tunnel, some thirty feet wide and some six feet tall, which is quite short. Now that's a very wide, short tunnel, and anyone who's mined, which most of you guys have not, but perhaps one of you has, would recognize. That's dangerously shallow and wide without some sort of support. But the good news is that they have left a combination of stone pillars uh, buttressing the ceiling. And where that has not sufficed, they have put in sturdy pillars of petrified fungal material in lieu of wood. One moment, I am looking for something specific. Um, Uh, Here it is. Oh, that's not it either. Ain't never seen a tree like that before. I have. But, uh, it comes, it doesn't, are there any, there's no fungus fungus growing nearby, is there? Oh, there's fungus growing everywhere, but nothing like this. This is a, this looks like it may have been hewn from a fungal cap some 20, 30 feet, 30 feet high, and then dried into some sort of really resilient woody material and then repurposed as a structural timber. Well, so my vote is to go say hi. Where is the reaction table? Goodness gracious, it should be in here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Uh, Never mind, I found it. Yeah. I'm worried. This it's makes you feel worried? Magician? 
it's not why we came, and it does seem... Hmm. Would there be any indication that um, the foul creatures that we saw on the former expedition went this way? Or should we, as Magnus indicates, maybe we should bypass it looking for more signs of a temple. A temple of evil. Well, this is not this is not the entrance that was referred to before, correct? This is not no. the one that we were trying to find, so... No, previous, my understanding is that previously you've been taking more of a southerly route rather than tightly hugging the uh, the northern walls. This yeah. is something which is only th only really obvious when you are quite close to the northern walls, as mentioned. Fairly shallow pit. No light... Uh, sorry, it's a fairly shallow archway, even though it is wide. No light comes from within. Until you're quite close to it, it's not clear. But now that you're hugging the northern walls, you can notice there th this tunnel, this mining tunnel, is there. I, I brandish and gesture, gesture with my halberd and say well what if um see these these seem like real smart lads what, what if we um what if they could help us what if there are people down here there are people down here oh that's great no that's the problem oh uh well shall we take shall we just vote on it and and or yes uh, father bloombad what say you it could easily be a trap to we go in there and we end up trapped in there. Um, I do not want to go in. Does it feel too claustrophobic? Let's press on. It is too claustrophobic to comfortably fight in there. Like with certain yes. weapons, you could engage, but generally speaking, you don't want to fight in a building in a such a low ceiling. We're going to keep an eye on that as we press on. We're going to Understood. keep looking back. Make some progress. Edwig, keep a sharp eye. Is <clears throat> is there anything around that we could plug that hole up, or at least arrange so that it makes noise if anything? Um, you want to lay a that way. you want to discreetly what? lay a tripwire across it from the sounds of it. That or put some of those. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, how, that would work. How much, I mean, have we passed the uh, remnants of the roof collapse yet? Uh, I think you're just reaching that now. You're just, or rather, you would just be reaching that after this next period of navigation. After you spent about an hour down here, muttering about through the dark. Um, Go ahead and so the how far away from this entrance is that detritus? Uh... A good, a good distance, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, se well, several then. hundred feet. Uh, yeah, that's too much work. Uh, then... It's a shame we lost uh, poor Glork last time. He could have kept a watch for us. Indeed. But alas, he served you in his own way. Noisily and fatally. <laughs> <laughs> Norbert uh, assumes this is a human and takes off his cowl and bows his head. And... Oh no 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 no! Norbert Glork Glork deserved it. What? I, I, how how could you speak of one of your your fellow warriors like that? No no, he was a creature of the underworld that I'd ensorcelled into my power, and he did any he, any he, he was bound to do my bidding. I look over at Father Bloombed. He 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 dabbles in in dark sorcery. Dabbles. Yes, uh, he turns away from Norbert, <laughs> exasperated. Anyways, well, a tripwire is not a bad idea, uh, or, or, or something, but uh, how would we know if it was tripped? Good point. I mean, we saw Other some goblins last time, and they ran away from us, so, I mean... Yeah. Oh, okay, so... so they're, they're mining. So those things that we killed, were those, like, zombies or skeletons or what? Ghouls. Oh, ghouls. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, the goblins, we did, we, I had almost forgotten about the uh, actual, the other goblins that live here. So, yeah, that's probably their, that's probably their place. 
And the good news is they're easily killed and they may have a, a treasure hoard down here. And plus I could enslave another. But it's probably not worth the side trip. And it is their territory, not ours. Something to consider for future developments. Ooh. So let's just keep it. Let's just, I mean, I suggest we just keep a good eye uh, and just pr proceed on. And if, if we've still got all the light shining, you know, we, we can see a good distance behind us. I mean, it, it'd be difficult for somebody to truly surprise us. It's in, true. This place doesn't have much in the way of good cover. It's yeah. possible for someone to sneak up on you, but not by accident. They would have to very carefully approach through the, like, through the micro terrain to ensure that they're always behind a little ridge. Yeah. It's not something that would happen uh, without clear intent. However, goblins are short, so they're not ill inclined to do that. However, goblins are also insane little idiots, so they're not likely to think <laughs> that far ahead. As you continue your journey to the west, of a smaller scale than the, uh, the Chinese variety, you, one of you, I'm going to say Norbert, because I'm sure he'll have the funniest reaction, has the keen, has this fortune to glance up above you at a critical moment and see the winged men, a quintet of them clinging to stalactites high on the roof, regarding you with absolute silence. Uh, for a moment, it's... No, sorry, go ahead. For a moment, it's hard to... Deter they seem closer than they should be before you realize it's because their size is more than human as a, a, a human was rendered in stone and in a scale of one and a half to one their wings unfurl like bat wings and they have long thin claws which dig deep into the stone and stabilize their position and when they wish to as they do now they hold very still very still indeed as though they were simply carved into the ceiling like a cathedral that norbert saw very once in his youth but their eyes are lively and bright and following you with clear intent and curiosity um so you guys are walking along in the sandy uh, gravelly rocky cave mm -hmm. floor and you just hear like his halberd clank against the ground as he lets it go and he and you just see him looking up and he's like oh i don't like that that's what you all see norbert do what is it norbert oh do we look up i look up uh, point up then. They do not move. They do nothing. They simply regard you. Mindful of your presence, it seems. Nothing of them moves except their eyes, which follow your motions very assiduously. Edward, Edward takes the moment to recover uh, Norbert's polar and hand it back to him. Oh, I... Th th thank you, Edwig. It's it's a nice it's a nice polar. Take care not to drop it. Right, well, whoever many, it is knows we're coming. How many do we see up there? Five. You see five of them. They can be count. They can distinguish. They don't move, so it's easy to keep track of them. There might be others you don't see, but no, you're confident you see five. They're how how high up? They cling to the ceiling, so almost a hundred feet high. You can only catch, you can only really see them, even with your light, quite dimly. If not for the glittering of their eyes, likely you would not have spotted them, nor for Norbert's uh, fortunate moment of goggle-eyed alarm. Does someone want to blind them with a, a flash, a sudden blast of light? How? Oh. Well, the those who wield the arcane powers can do such things among us. Do you think that would work? Magnus could perhaps parlay with them again. Well, to what effect? We had our parlay. They said, we hope you're not coming to kill our, to destroy our, uh, our master. Do you wish me to speak with them again? It's not comfortable for anyone else. They, they don't they don't speak in our common tongue do they I fear they do not they do not know what you are saying even as you speak 
Unless, of course, they do, but they've shown no sign of doing so in the past. Are they only watching us? They're not They're, they only making watch. any of... They only watch. Maybe we should just, like, just, just keep, just leave. Maybe we should leave. Yes, well, I, I, I think I agree. I, I see no reason to deplete our resources unless the need arises. However, we do know they're creatures of chaos. Indeed. Indeed. Well, what else can we do when they're so far from us? I can shoot lightning at them. It's true. And it should be known. You've not yet brought one of them to Ullman. No doubt he'd be quite appreciative to see such a specimen. But... They are large, and there are five of them. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, killing someone's relative and dragging them away to be stuffed is regarded as an unneighborly act and not conducive to future good relations. Well, is this not why we're here? Five of them? You know, we don't know what we're going to face when we go into the actual place we're trying to get. And our expeditions thus far have been marked by nothing but distraction after distraction. And but for this reason, like, if no other, I, I, I yes, so, sorry. Well, do you like having them behind us? If we just go on, press on with them lurking up there? I'm going to... I'm going to assume, like, from their size and from the fact that they're pure chaos creatures, that they're likely to be quite powerful and not easily... Uh, not lightly to be engaged um, by such as we have here. That's just, you know, that's Magnus's opinion. Whether it's right or wrong, I don't actually know out of character. <laughs> but but, uh, well, but uh, he looks worried. What about the rest of you? I believe, John, you must simply make a decision at this time. All right, let's move on. You move on. The glittering eyes from the ceiling recede into the distance as they continue to do what they do, unbeknown to you. You move on. The journey, the journey onward continues along. You begin to hear the river babbling again. Here it's broader, shallower, no less cold, but the flow is slower. You suspect from the way it glitters far ahead that you could conceivably, the, the water recedes into the distance, far and far away, a shallow flowing bloom, sorry, a shallow flowing path. To the north, you can see that the cavern branches northwards to an unknown degree. To the south, you have, you have reached the western edge of the cavern, at least here. So there are three clear, path, three clear routes you can take, besides, of course, turning the way you came. You could go north, see what reaches you there. You could attempt to cross the river here, where it seems more shallow. Or you could follow the river upstream and see where it takes you. You have been down here for about two and a half hours. Is this, uh, to the north, is this not the tunnel that we believed led to the Rappanathic? Up here, you mean? Yes. Uh, I don't think it is. It might be. Do you want to go check it out? Well, I just... I remembered something like this. It, it, Bloombad, Magnus? Pretty I it, is. Yeah, I thought it was farther down the river, like a smaller entrance near the mouth of the river there. 
Can we see that or or no? You mean up this way? I'm drawing a little arrow here. Northwest, yeah. Yeah, you think? Let me review my notes real quick to make sure I don't boondoggle anything. But da -da -da. okay. Da -da -da. There is a small. This is simply a. The river flows from a tunnel to the northwest. It's shallow. Enough that you could wade it, at least for a while. But the water is very cold. You might not be in a position to lightly endure the trek. But you're confident that if you truly needed to and you made the decision and you showed stalwart and you showed fortitude as all of you as adventurers have the capacity to do you could navigate upstream this river and see where it leads you well i'm curious about going straight north but what of, what of the rest of you do, do we smell do we see anything in this immediate area excellent question excellent question what would you smell coming that direction. You smell steam. You smell thick, musty, steamy space. You smell something something alive, mineral rich. You smell living things. You don't smell rot, not per se. It smells like a, a sauna or a stable. Though, of course, all of that is overshadowed by the crisp scent of running water and lime. Do we take some time investigating, fellows? Do we need to rest? How are we feeling? What, what, what do you want? What do you want to do? You're all in good health. The, the north sounds reasonable, if at least to find out what's there. All right. we do, I think we're going to go poke up to the north a bit. Sounds good to me. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. One moment. I have to do something creative. <laughs> You approach north, and it quickly becomes clear to you that you have reached in the edge of the cavern's reach. The slope of the cavern leads you upwards, upwards at a perhaps a 30 degree angle. And as you reach the far face, you encounter another one of those strange tunnels from before. One of the ones that's about 20 to 30 feet across, five to six feet tall, buttressed by pillars of stone. From this one, you hear no sound of picks, no sound of movement. No, no, you hear sounds of movement, but no sounds of industry. Instead, you hear a familiar chittering and scuttling sound, like great rasping dry wood, as something enormous and insectile busies its work within. Mm. Oh, I, I suspect ants. What do you mm. say? Yes, as, I have. <laughs> In fact... As you examine closely, a great warrior ant, one of the vast horse-sized ants you've seen before, scuttles out carrying the carcass of a dead goblin in its, in its enormous mandibles. Oh. A horrible little creature's legs still twitching from the poison. And then, a moment later, it's joined by so many more of its comrades, the insectile behemoths pouring forth from this archway in a tide of unthinking ravenousness oh god their attention turns upon you and at once it becomes clear that danger is afoot and combat cannot be lightly evaded give me a moment 
got to go to the a, a, a tide, he said. Well, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, give me just a moment. I have to go do a bunch of digging things up and pulling out the right shapes. He's he's giving us the version we tell later at the tavern. <laughs> I, I mean, it's still pretty tidily. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Hang on a minute. It's a tidal wave of ants. A great host of bug. This seems like a great time to use lightning bolt. Well, I got two Where guys, are the... two sleeps each. Hang a second. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that too. Uh, never mind. <laughs> All right, let me calm down. <laughs> Where are the giant ants? But actually, They're sleep. Right here somewhere. Come on. Best area. Here we are. So da da. I also have a guy with two sleeps. Absolutely no idea. I'm gonna to have to get back to you it's, on that. First level spells are by the book a hundred. Ross had been doing two hundred, and they they take a week to make. But we haven't we haven't had a full week at our disposal since returning right. from. Curse. This encounter occurs at a distance of 80 feet. Wolf kills player. John Q, I need from you a initiative check. That is a D6. Okay. Right. Oh, not so good. The ants, unfortunately for you, have the initiative. So, first, movement and spell casting. Who wishes to cast spells? Me. My hirelings will do two sleeps. One on the front yep. line, one on the back. All right. And I'm going to also cast uh, between myself and my hireling two more sleeps. All right. A host of somnolence. All righty. Movement and missile fire. Who? Do me a solid, and if you can, write down your intended spells in the chat. Okay. Now, who's doing movement? If you are cat, if you intend to do missile fire, let me know. If you tend to yes. do, let me know. Oh, never mind. I should I do have... missile fire. That's a way better plan. I have four missiles coming. I forgot that I could do that. Mm -hmm. I have two missiles coming. All right. The armor Magnus, class should... of the ants is sixteen, as per plate armor. Okay, then I've got one hit, followed by one more hit. I missed for a total of nine damage. Okay, so what were you go. saying, John? Oh, you, you're doing those two fighters from now on with the combat, right? If that's if that's okay with you, I yeah. was just yeah. yeah. Okay. I I hit with two damage. You can still position them wherever you want. By the way, if you, I mean, you know, I really, I'm assuming that they're participating in as much missile fire as possible. Okay. Did uh, I? Uh, the ants were not close enough to make it to us then before the missiles go off. I uh, movement and missile are happen simultaneously. You guys can attack before they reach you, but they will reach you at the end of end of this movement phase. Right. Okay. Is that everyone? So. Two hits from Chris from Jay. Okay, so hit from him, hit from him. And did anyone else hit it? No, I hit for two. Okay. Two point. So this ant is almost sling, and 
Moonbat hit as well. So this one is reduced to a single hit point. It is battered and staggering. Let's see. So if 13 it's hit. Uh, yeah, a 13 will not hit, unfortunately, no. Okay. Your armor class is 16. It is completely unmoved by its injuries. Okay, now, their movement is very swift. A proper hunting party unfolds. Oh, that's bad. It's not good. What's the hit dice? Uh, their hit dice are uh, two for the workers, or three for the warriors. And how are you going to rule on how much, like, how much sleep gets applied? Like, do we roll for both hit dice, or do we just roll for, like, choose one hit die to target? Or uh, roll the hot, roll the roll for the four hit die. Sorry, roll for the two hit dice, and then roll for, if you get all of them. We'll also roll for the three hit dice, and we'll see. I'm going to interpret it generously. Basically, you roll for both, and you pick whichever is better. Okay, so that was movement. Now melee. They have the initiative, so they attack first. Bloombad is targeted by two bites, one from this big ant and one from this big ant. They attack with 1d20 plus 3. So, so the red-tinted ones are the warriors? Yes. Okay. I have labeled them as big. Okay. Bloombad's armor saves him completely. They scrabble at it, but do not pierce. Wolf kill is it targeted with by one attack. The ant is easily held at bay. Nalm is or Neve is held attacked by once. Oh, unfortunate. Ooh. He is struck true. He receives four points of damage and must make a saving throw. Okay. Norbert, you are also attacked by this ant. Fortunately, that... you... Sorry, say again? No. Uh, which which Neve was that? My fighter or Algar's? Because Algar's fighter is not with us, I guess. Yes, it's your Neve. My ne the one... I'm still trying to figure out how to... We may need to rename some of my... I think I'm just going to rename my guys, because my guys are the ones that have all of the uh, the collisions. All right. He would appear to have passed his save. Excellent. He is not further tormented by the poison. Oh, actually, no, sorry. He is, but only a little bit. He suffers uh, five points of damage instead of four, as he greatly reduces the impact of the poison. And let's see. Let me write down his stats real quick. 14, so he has a max of 14 hit points, of which he has lost 5, so he has 9 of 14 hit points. And Norbert, uh, the one attacking you, is not effective. It hits an AC of 7, which will not pe penetrate your armor. Uh, whether it penetrates his composure is another question entirely. I'm oh yeah, sure he, he starts will. seeing all this chaos and darkness and men breathing and lights shimmering and stuff, and he's he's like he backs into Magnus and Magnus. I mean, you'd probably like clap him on the back, yeah, and push him back out. Take your place, soldier. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you hear somebody scream as they're struck and blood flies up and splashes <laughs> on his face. As far <laughs> the only one who's been truly injured is now. That's all I'm done. However, next turn is going to look pretty nasty, as these creatures are great, very fast and entirely capable of swarming over you if you do not greatly reduce their numbers right now. Uh, so, melee, rest of melee, it's your turn. Uh, Bloombad is in combat, Ulfkel is in combat, Neve and Norbert are in combat. So, I want melee attacks from both of you, and I want to know what you're attacking. In front of me. All right. Yeah, me too. Can I use Golden Spear? Yes. That gives you, it's a plus two weapon. I attack this one in front of me. All right. Okay, 
John's attack does not penetrate the armor. I do two damage. Like Norbert. All right, Norbert is effective. But these things have. Don't you do two plus one, or is that just plus one on the attack for for uh, you're holding it in two hands or something? Or am I just imagining that? Oh, I'm that's not certain. Actually, I think that's right. I'll double check. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought you got the plus one for wielding and two handed. Thanks to the barrage of missile fire earlier, we get that so badly weakened one of the uh, great warrior ants. Bloombad's blow immediately kills the one to, the one to his north. The one to Norbert South is struck low. Uh, John Q and Neve, I believe, are not able to uh, find a weak spot in the armor of these great ants. Now, spellcaster sleeps abound. I think there's four sleeps going off. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm gonna roll. Um... What does that look like? I mean, you yes. Know. <laughs> I want to, I want to hear a description of how your spells manifest because sleep is one I've. I know how your magic missiles look, which is. I mean, you guys are like... trained now, right? So you get this rank of soldiers, and all of a sudden, like the rank of soldiers, like like it's like a British firing line, and they sweep, they switch, and then these magic users like throw dust or some goofy thing. What does that look like? Magnus they, like, is always for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably on the way, perhaps we explained, but uh, Magnus has always looked uh, like grabbing just a pinch, maybe like a you know a Julia Child style pinch of salt, except it's a pinch of sand, uh, and uh, blowing from his hand. Uh, it's not particularly spectacular, but it's 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 it carries up and then down, resting on them. All right. Well, here's how Magnus. we'll do this. Uh, okay. For all of your spellcasters, uh, so that's four simultaneous sleeps. I yep. want forty-six and forty-six, which uh, I can roll or Ma I can make Magnus roll. Magnus, roll it for me. Roll forty-six twice. Okay. Well, that that was for. His stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the other. It looks like we got 13, 26 13. total. Yes. For Which the D2 guys. Yes. Here's what happens a swirl of sand encompasses all of you, and for a moment, uh, your vision is obscured by this whirlwind of sand and dust. And as it passes, the silica glittering in its wake and the light of your uh, continual holy of your holy beacon. The ants, their antennae waver, they stumble, and finally they slump down, still and quiet and relaxed. It's not obvious at first whether they are dead or simply sleeping, because unlike living, unlike the creatures you know, their breathing is so passive, so strange. Their eyes cannot blink shut. Their antennae, which were previously stirring wildly, reduced to simple twitching. It is a very strange sight, but they are brought to stillness. Where is that thing I am trying to... There are too many playlists here for me to keep track of. I'm sorry. Uh... It's sad because there's <laughs> like only four are needed. So I need to like move them around. I'll muck around with them later. All of the ants are set to sleep. They're at your mercy. Assuming They're charging in and packing their heads off. Alright. With... Great gusto, you behead the ants, and as you do so, their bodies thrash back to life for a moment, scuttering and twitching, scut trying to scrabble over things they cannot get perceived before finally their limbs fold up on themselves and they hold still. But it seems beheading is not enough to kill these things in an instant, just like the ants you've just like tiny ants. But they are nonetheless dispatched. Alright, that was seventeen worker ants and four warrior ants. Got it. And do you wish to? What do you wish to do with the carcasses? What do you wish to do with the tunnel to the north? What is your intention? Well, that, that, oh, that let was, me bring uh, us back to the actual area. Sorry, to the actual over overland map, such as it is. I do want to check the goblin, kind of the the one they were carrying when they came out. Let me describe the status and condition of the Gobulin. 
First off, this goblin is extremely dead. For those of you who have not yet seen uh, a goblin, a goblin is a figure some three, three and a half feet tall, uh, densely muscular, its eyes slightly too large, a face not human, but not inhuman either. Fey, chimp-like might be a good description of it. And its eyes full of a, a vivid madness. Lips frequently drawn back to reveal gangly, pointed, ungainly teeth. Skin the color of ashes and ashes and bread mold. I want to pat him down and check if he's got any pouches or pockets. Hmm. Their armor has been... So here is what you discover on these creatures. Not much. They have a handful of... Their person, they are garbed in boiled leather. They carry a small uh, mining pick. Their mining equipment appears to be a iron pick, not part of it. Sorry, an iron spike and a sturdy hammer, which they use to hammer that spike. Uh, their bodies have been gnawed, severed, gnawed and severed, and their vital fluids have been drawn, drawn up and drained free by the uh, ants, which have uh, which rushed upon them and slew so many. So we see nothing that would connect them to the temple that we are seeking. Nothing obvious. They, uh, in his pocket, you do find, uh, he does have a purse, uh, braided around his waist by a cord of some, uh, fungal fiber. Within it, there is a small leather pouch. Within the small leather pouch, you find two, uh, clay bottles stoppered with wax and a small pile of silver coin. Well, fellows, we've got a couple of bottles. Mm -hmm. Shall we there drink? Be, now, beware, you have not proceeded into the into the tunnel which uh, the ants swarmed out of, and there may yet be more within. You haven't been in there yet. Let's have some lookouts. Edwick uh, volunteers for lookout. Okay, I, I, I go to. I'm the new. I'm the FNG. I go to. Nice. All right, you guys are. When you say lookout, do you mean they're they're keeping watch for attack from the south, or they're going into the tunnel to see what they discover? You want to poke your heads in there, boys, to make sure there's no more worker warrior ants. Oh, all right. Ooh. I'm sensible. I squat down and. Um... I, uh, can you use a halberd one-handed? You can't. It's two-handed. No, it's a two-handed weapon. Well, you can this... kind of, you can kind of wobble it around one-handed, but it won't be a very effective weapon. Can I'll you... let you do it, but it will suck. Uh, Ed Edwin, can you carry a torch? I can carry a torch. Great. Okay. I'll give you a torch. Light it. All right. He, um, he, he stows a spear, so, and just takes the takes the lit torch and now he's got a spirit now he's got a shield on the torch now this mine this mine tunnel is wide and shallow very shallow you must stoop because it's clearly built for the scale for the something of an inhumanly small scale the farther in you go the the more the, the coppery ting the coppery tang of blood fills the air as you discover the aftermath a vicious massacre of all the poor little goblins here who have been ripped to shreds by a great host of ravenous and unfeeling insectile horrors. Now don't go too far there, boys. Just, just just checking to see that there's not more of those ants on the march. Well, I'm, I'm totally going to check their bodies. Each of the... of Now, the bodies are not entirely intact, and examining the wreckage of them requires a little bit of caution, but you do determine that among the corpses you find, you have found a total of 13 skulls with a varying amount of intact flesh upon them. Several uh, pocket pouches, along with one uh, haversack which contains a variety of equipment. One of, one of the bodies, is uh, the one attached to the haversack, is much more intact because it has been uh, protected not merely by uh, you know, 
boiled and polymerized leather, but by uh, sturdy rings of steel and iron, which had protected its little body from being too viciously mangled by the depredations of the ants. Is How far into this tunnel do you go? Is this intact ring mail? It seems to be, albeit intact is might be putting it generously. It's been quite, quite vigorously savaged by the ants. Still, you could take it back with you, and if nothing else, it's good iron. There's always demand for that. Edwig, do you want to upgrade and then give me your rusty old chainmail? Oh, hold up, Manal. It's good. It's good ring mail, but it's goblin sized. Oh. It's raw material for repair. It's not. It's like an oven board. mitt. <laughs> <laughs> a little bigger than that, but it's, it's more like you could put it on your thighs as a grieve, perhaps. This also, looks like it also, was made for an elven prince. Also, I misspoke earlier. Edwig has ring mail, not shame. So. Uh, come back now, boys. Don't don't poke too far down in there. Come tell us what you saw. Okay, I get the ring mail and the pouches and haversack and drag it back with the 13 skulls. Now, I'll and give you the... It looks you over and goes, or rich. Quite so. Here is what you find. Now, Father Bloombed, how much flesh do you need to resurrect somebody? Uh... Is it like the fifth element? You just need like a little bit? I'm not certain. Hold on. Oh, 110 silver pieces. Is somebody tracking all the treasure? I apologize, I wasn't. You. This is the first treasure you found, so... Oh, okay. Uh, the spell description says a corpse, so I would probably need the old thing. Oh, refer probably... oh referee, <laughs> what counts? What doth count as a corpse? Uh, the ringmail clad one is sufficiently intact that you could simply resurrect it, and uh, its imperfections would be purged by the power of the light. The other ones, I'm afraid, could be repaired if you uh, were willing, if you could identify which body parts went with which carcass, but as is. Under these circumstances, no. no. We also we, have, we the, don't have time. the grimly, and I'm a bad person for feeling this way, but hilarious chance that it's just going to fail the system shock check. That is uh, true. But, uh, Magnus, you can talk to them, so maybe we can bring one back, and then you can, and you know, entice it. Well, it says, it says five days. Are you talking about bringing back a goblin? Yeah. Because it says... Yeah, I don't know the light plague would allow that. Uh, that's a good question. That's a good point. I hadn't thought about that, of course. Although Even... I could kind of speak with dead. Oh. I don't speak of. So. Oh, one last thing. Uh, there is something important you find back there, which is a locked strongbox made of apparently petrified fungal material and held shut by a very large padlock. Oh, that's the best treasure chest I've ever seen. It's made of fungus. Is there any I evidence we, of what uh... they are mining? Uh, are you willing to go in there and poke around and check? Spend a little time? Is there no, a chest? Maybe they saw something. We want that chest. I want to furnish my fake person's house with this fungus chest. I respect that. Do you simply grab the chest in your grubby little hands and pick it up and run away? I have to, because I... You, you touch it with your bare hands? I have to. I have to. Oh boy! Nothing bad happens at all. You pick it up, it's fine. It's heavy. It's a good, like, it's, it feels like a good solid 15 pounds of material in there. It's chunky. Uh, there, There's probably a key here somewhere among the, wreck, the wreckage. You haven't found it yet. Shall we Maybe spend it's in some one time? of the ants? Let's spend, uh, shall we spend a turn or two uh, looking through things? Do we, we don't have any thieves. We don't. They all died. The thieves almost, were all sacrificed on the altar of enthusiasm. I almost actually ran a thief for this game. Oh, we well. can hopefully Menachem will be willing to turn his talent to it if we can get it back to Caden's rest. Uh, if not Menachem, then in the privacy of your own home, a, a simple hacksaw could do well enough. Granted, hacksaws are fairly high technology for the setting, so it would take some time. As you jiggle the hand. 
it feels like it contains stones mostly, which is odd. So you spend a couple we're... turns searching the area you mentioned. Do I understand correctly? Like, start with ten minutes, and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, that's, that's my vote. Okay. Okay. What What were these creatures doing mining? Do you think they were working in league with the chaos powers down in Rapanathic? I mean, the the we're looking for this temple. Mm-hmm. So, so it seems like they ought to be answering to somebody. Seems likely. I wonder if there are any answers inside the chest that it would be worthwhile to try to crack it open now, or if it's just stony. I don't know. So you spend a few moments looking around. Now, none of your characters have a background in mining. Uh, Most of you guys have done your, you know, many of you guys do have a workmanly background, but your workmanlike, but your work is on the surface. Creatures of, you know, sun, sun sunborn industry. You, you hunt, you work timber, you harvest, you fish. None of you are creatures of the deep dark. None of you are super familiar with mining. So it's not totally clear what it is that you found. But but there is one substance which all of you recognize at once when you see it flecking the walls under the light of your torches, and that is gold. Native gold. Gold ore settled into the walls. So at once it's clear, okay, yeah, they're mining. They're mining for gold. But there's also some other mineral which uh, has striations in the walls here. Not gold, but uh, an odd bluish substance which you can't which you're unfamiliar with which they've also clearly been you know digging at you know removing from the walls they're following a vein of this not only the gold but this you know this bluish mineral whose substance you are unfamiliar with perhaps almond might know perhaps another sage perhaps the jeweler back at uh cadence rest magnus hasn't seen anything like it no Back in the not old... even in, not even in Constantinople. Actually, maybe in Constantinople in your time there. Give me a one d twenty. A high number is good. A low number is bad. Uh, this can is I, not some. It... You want me to make it just my? Oh, save a save. No, it's, magic? It, no. It's, yes, a save throw. A save throw. Give me a saving throw. All right. Can I claim the uh, special magic bonus for the? Uh... Uh, as though I was trying to save against spells, wands, and staves? Uh... No, no, not in this okay. instance. Where are your character sheets? Why can That's I not a find fail. Them? Unfortunately, this is a new substance to you. One okay. which you are not familiar. Okay, so this is handouts. Oh, of um, course I can see it on the save. Ulfkel will chip a little bit off if he, mm-hmm. can, if he can reach it. You can. Uh, with the, the equipment that the uh that these goblins have is you know sturdy iron and steel uh and big chunky ham basically big chunky hammers and sharp steel picks you can extract a chunk for your for your use it's not the f- you're not sure what it is okay you've got blue something- ore yeah mm-hmm. and what's in the haversack anything interesting uh yes in the in the haversack you find a clay vial stoppered with wax uh marked with a red stripe of Marked with a red stripe of glaze, which I will save you some tremendous time and confusion, and say that is a potion of healing. The other Anyone? flasks, yeah. the other flasks, the other clay supper flasks contain lamp oil. The twenty-four bottles. Yes. And is there two more? Because we had two before that. So is there twenty-six or twenty-four total? There are twenty-four total, and. Okay. So 24 total and one potion of healing, which I will just mark as a potion of healing. Nice. Is it, um, does it look within reason to be able to accomplish uh, any mining on our own to make profit here? Or does it look like we have neither the manpower nor the tools? Does that look feasible mm. or in, in, infeasible? Well, the first concern that obviously raises is that uh, miners here are presented with a real risk of being devoured by ants. Yes. As you've seen. However, you're confident that among the three of you, you have the strength necessary to do mining. With one concern, none of you have any experience in mining. It's right. simply not something you know. Uh, you could find someone who does and learn the art. You could hire miners and escort them here if they're sufficiently foolhardy. It depends 
to, it remains to be seen what is the value of this ore how much how what is the market how readily can its can the native gold be extracted from it and what is this mysterious blue substance of which they are so uh, fixated with there's not much gold here like we're seeing like flecks of gold there's like subtle flecks of native gold yeah, like we... it's clearly there's a, a lot of it in total but its proportion to the ore is not good it sounds like a, na a nested task with having the future settlement built near mm -hmm. Rappanothic, yeah. So, yes. Well, what do you what do you fellows say? Should we um, go see what is in that stream now that we know what this contains? Yeah, let's let's make good time Briefly. while we can. Yeah. Okay. You turn back south. Your path is uninterrupted. You enter the stream. Now, you hike, you remove your boots, you hike up your pants, you wade into the icy waters. Oh, it's cold as hell. And as you go, the water rises up to your ankles, to your shins, to your knees, and to your thighs. If it was not for the, the holiness of your purpose and the radiance of the light, you would have no patience whatsoever for this trek. But you do proceed. Now, from here, I am afraid I must be a little clever because we are passing beyond the areas which are uh, already presented for, already in encompassed within the map. So I need to pull up some records and start copy pasting from them to make visible areas of the map for you to peruse. So give me just a moment. I want to keep you waiting too long, but this shouldn't take too long either. Da, 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 da. Wait, what am I doing now? You sent you sent me this at some point. I should know where it is. Where has it gone off to? Here it is. Is, it, is anyone in need of a he, that healing potion, or how are uh, we doing? Uh, one of you guys was actually injured fairly severely. It was Naum who took five hit points out of his fourteen, which is a significant proportion. Well, would it look like that would be an appropriate dose for that kind of healing? I can just cast cure light in a second. Very good. Okay. He's healed for two hit points. Nice. Give me just a moment. You proceed upstream. You enter. As you go down, as you go upstream, the air becomes thicker, mustier, heavy with steam. The air is humid. Your flesh become begins to be grow clammy. Your clothes stick to your skin. Clouds of steam billow through the air and obscure the light cast by your artifice. And then the character of the noise stirred up by your footsteps the sloshing through the water begins to change as the cavern opens up into a broad space. Visibility is quite limited. You are in an enormous chamber. What is the scale of this map? Well, that's quite large. You're in an enormous chamber. The river that you're still within rose, flows smoothly from east to west. You hold your lamps high aloft to get a sense of the to get a sense of the place. To the south, post the map in here. 
This map is hundreds of feet across. To the south, the cavern opens up broader. To the north, there is a passageway, and to the east, there is a passageway. The hot springs here, clouds of steam billow from the ground, water gurgles no noisily, the air reeks of sulfur. Hot, mineral-rich mineral -rich water spills up from pools in the ground. Great colonies of luminous, colorful material bloom across the sulfur surfaces of the caves around you. You can hear above you the scent of living things, of bats flapping against the ceiling. Tiny movements in the distance. You've entered a, a kind of oasis in this dark place. A fumarole feeding the living creatures here. What do you do? You have been in this you have been in the pits here for some four hours. It is on the surface world. It must be all, almost noon. Perhaps you could eat. If this place is safe for that. Your body oh, the lunch break sucks. Frankly, you could stand to your clothes are soaked. You could stand to build a fire and dry off. Take out your garments, if indeed it's safe to do so. Should we, should we post some, you know, some people on to look out? There, there's a passage to the north. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And of course, as ever, right. you're the only source of light here that you see. Anything that sees in the darkness is going to catch sight of you quite quickly. But for now, wood. nothing wanders here. That's also true. You have a very limited short source of fuel, but you have a lot of lantern oil. Yeah, let's make a, a fire and dry out, have a little bite, and um, when we're ready with from that, let's let's oh, figure out on. what what are we. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just saying, yeah, forge on. Yeah, we don't have any indication that the available paths. I, I didn't hear anything that. I mean, we just need to pick one, right? Mm-hmm. So, you don't see I any paths we're... other than to the south, the east, or the north. South, the east, and north. Um, I'm oh, sorry, southwest and north. Okay. I guess every cardinal direction has a place you can go. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I think we should just keep going too. I I vote to the west. We we'll just keep continuing that way. You can follow along the river and see where it leads you. Agreed. Okay. You have a short time of rest, which is not interrupted. You can never, you can never completely relax here, knowing especially that you will have to wade back through that icy river to return to the sunlit worlds above. But for a moment, your fortitude is restored. You pass west. The river, lead, as you follow the river, eventually it comes to a spot where it sinks completely under the earth to this and uh, prevents you from following it further. As it does, it goes north. It uh, The wall tilts north and allows you to proceed further to the west. I presume that you will follow that, barring, other, barring uh, any reason not to. Mm -hmm. As you advance, you spy a series of eyes in the darkness, small, Giant rats, it seems, but they sense they sense your power, the number of you, and they do not seem so ravenous nor so vast as the chaos mutated creatures you've seen above. No larger than perhaps, say, a small dog. They take a glance at you and then scamper away into the wilderness as they regard you with the fear that beasts ought to regard men with. You reach another pa you reach another intersection, which you can go south towards more billowing steam, north towards unknown unknown things, or uh, or farther into the west. Billowing steam to the south, and then... Yes. More hot springs, you suspect. Hmm. The whole... The air in here is tremendously moist and damp. Every surface is lightly sheened with 
a faint, a faint tinge of mold or something stranger. Anyone have any sense of anything? I just feel a sense to go north, but anybody else? No. I prefer I prefer following either the left hand rule or the right hand rule, depending, as long as it's consistent. Um, but failing that, I'd vote north too. I'm down. Shall shall we go north and see what lies up that way then okay northwards onward you wander to quiet smokes Sorry, if you quiet, as you proceed north, the steam grows thinner. Let's see. Torchlight begins to lose some of its vigor. Hot springs, swirling mists seem to diffract the color around you into strange rainbows. Stalagmites and stalactites bloom and glitter in every direction. A wonderland has never known light. You reach another river rushing from west to east. The river is wide and a bit deep. You have no easy way of traversing it. Pools of hot water steam to the southwest and so, uh, steam to the southeast. Does it look deep, the river? Yes, quite so. I, I are, does this seem? This is just natural caverns. There doesn't seem to be any sign of, um, you know, a, a large occupation by forces. Oh, actually, of... I'm sorry. I, I missed an important step here. There's not merely a river there but a gorge, a tremendous gorge, and the river that you see is a great depth below you, almost almost at the edge of your light. The gorge itself is, goodness, almost 108, 150 feet across. So this is an extremely uh, uncooperative depth, extremely unco uncooper uncooperative and not easily traversable pit. But it doesn't look like there's been a lot of traffic this way, right? Ah, how might you determine that? Give me a sense of your intentions here. How you might unearth this mystery. Uh, where on the floor, you know, any anything left behind that, um, scraps of anything? Hmm. Yes, you lift your, you lift up your light, you peer into the pits below, and what you find there, skeletons. Bones seem to cover every surface of the gorge's bottom. All, ranging from, a few of them are recent, but and largely they seem to be ancient, weathered, a great, an entire midden's worth of discarded carcasses. Torn asunder, cast into the depths, gnawed free of flesh. A horripilation of anxiety ripples up your back. A sensation that this is a dangerous place, more dangerous than it first seemed. That perhaps your safety so far has been quite an illusion. So hundreds of skeletons? Yes. Do they look humanoid? Some, but mostly they look stranger. Let me find some good selections of, this, of the images you might find. Let's see. Rat skeletons. Be 
twisted and overgrown skeletons that you've grown to associate with the moss men. A strange creature that an enormous bulky humanoid whose head seems split down the middle with a uh, jawline like the mandibles of an ant. A, f a few creatures that seem like hollowed out a few things that seem like hollowed out stalagmites like vast snail shells, whelks that have been snapped open and sucked dry and cast into the mid but also yeah, there's some men here or what was once men this looks like a massive graveyard do you think um, this is the um <laughs> final resting place of victims of chaos. Is there anything distinctive about the skeletons and like tooth marks or claw marks or? From this range, you can't clearly see. Do you want to fly down and take a close peek for yourself? There, is there the glitter of coin or reflection of uh, Well, you know, now that you mention a... it, no. In fact, not a single one. You can't see a single glimmer of anything metallic down there. In that case, no. So just skeletons is all we can see. We can't see gear or, you know, no. e equipment or armor. It's just, just strip a, naked just, skeleton. Just, just a midden. That makes you think of nothing so much as the floor of a tavern after men had finished feasting on chickens. So something stripped them bare and then tossed them down in this pit. Hmm, teeth. that's interesting. There might be teeth marks. You can't see them from here. But they look humanoid size? Some of them. Uh, for the most part, they're larger than humanoid size. Or at or inhuman at all. Oh. As mentioned, you've got the gnarled skeletons that you've grown to associate with Mossman. Uh, some abhuman creature that's absolutely giant, tremendously strong, has a face split down the middle, and has big eyes on either side, and then nothing but teeth between them. Oh. Oh. Well, that's... That's... Um... <laughs> this is starting to look... iffy. Yes. Well... I... Yes. Yeah. Mm. Is our time short? Your time it is, is short. How shall we finish this expedition? Um, is there any hint of any movement in the pit? In the pit below? Yeah, like where the skeletons are. No, not a one. In that case, being that we're near the end, I will expend a fly and go and see what I can see closer of these skeletons. I assume the those of you who have ranged weapons will be prepared to provide support. Sounds good to me. Down, down you go to the rushing waters and to the and the middens that bury them. So, th imagine. Imagine that this is like a gorge cut into the into the, the cave floor by swift flowing water, and the edges of the gorge have acu have accumulated what at first seems like a beach, but is soon revealed to be these skeletons. The skeletons have at this rent distance you can clearly see they have been chewed apart. They have been wrenched. There are great tooth marks. They have been, and when I say great tooth marks, I mean great tooth marks and pulled apart as though with great ease and cast into the waste bin below. No doubt much of the uh, the bones have been washed downhill as the cavalcade of corpses produced by whatever's been eating these have either been come to a stable rest against the walls of the gorge or rushed headlong into the distance to be someone else's problem as in any proper midden ought. A tremendous amount of uh, 
you know, fungal, algal, and lichenous material has grown up around this midden, uh, gradually decomposing the skeletons, uh, finding, eking out every little last bit of nutrition from the ligaments and the skulls and the calcium and the phosphorus. You could perhaps retrieve one as a uh, gift for Ullman and perhaps um, explain what it's from. I will get... I mean, I'm pretty strong. So I'll get a couple, I guess. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, any, anything that looks... Yeah, anything I don't recognize. Mm -hmm. You retrieve the one of the big split-headed skulls, which is about yay big, flying up, like holding a prize pumpkin in your hands. <laughs> Have a look at this, Norbert. It's not right. <laughs> It's not right. The mages are more enthused than Norbert. <laughs> you suspect that some of them are, are... There's a sense that they're egging each other on, trying to prove to each other that they're all worldly men who are too educated and too initiated into the occult to possibly be frightened of the prospect of being devoured alive by whatever this thing might have once been as it walked the earth. But it's also clear that... Some, not all of them will sleep soundly tonight, thinking of the... So they're claw marks. You say, I definitely see claw... Tooth yeah, this marks, is, okay. Yeah, this is... This something was eaten by something even bigger. Yeah. And the, the, the purple worm didn't have teeth, per se, right? Or or, or, or did it? What, 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 what... <sighs> ah, man. There's a memory you've suppressed for, you know, mental health reasons. <laughs> Reaching back in your memory. No, yeah, I mean, it might have been the purple worm. Uh, you remember that thing's teeth as being... These, this skull, you can see, like, this is, it's been, like, gouged and, like, arr, and sort of sheared yeah. and worried uh, by teeth, which are sharp and kind of sharp and leaf-shaped, like, big, sharp, like, slashing teeth, the kind of thing that you would use to, like, rip and tear. And the yeah. teeth of the purple worm uh, were much more grippy teeth. They were swallowing whole, piercing the right. sort of teeth that you have to make sure that once something's in your throat, it doesn't come out again. Pharyngeal jaws. Right. So it's a different kind of teeth here. You're definitely going to have a little nightmare tonight. <laughs> uh, that, we, yeah. I'm afraid it is 8.30. Uh, uh, the expedition has reached its end. The party turn, must turn back, and perhaps, perhaps out of necessity or perhaps out of wise caution, as they leave this midden behind them. The party's treasures... The party returns with a sampling of treasures, mysterious auras, a mysterious skeleton, and a mysterious skulls, uh, a goblin corpse, which may yet be resurrected, and uh, whatever the heck this skull is. And the box. Can, yeah, the, and the box. Can, can, yes. can Menachem give that box a try, or, or can we can we find yes, out? Yes, yes. I'll spare you the difficulties. Okay. The lock is well within Menachem's capacity. He spends a a few frustrating hours tinkering it open once he's determined and eventually once he's determined that it is not trapped in any way he simply saws it open through brute force within it are only stones just stones just ore more of the ore you collected but quite a lot of it the blue You're not quite sure what to make the of blue it. again yes yes flecked of course with native gold so it certainly has some value regardless of whatever this blue stuff is but you suspect you suspect the blue stuff is the point you know, it has all the earmarks of, uh, of a group enslaved to collect a material for someone else. Gobl Indeed. Goblins lend themselves to just such activities. Short-lived, incoherent, uh, easy Easily to swayed, yes. Yes. And yet, shockingly fierce once they put their little minds to it. Mm. You return back to the place from which you came. Let me go ahead and swatch back to da da. And with that, our, our night is. You should all consider yourselves free to depart or to remain as you will. I am blessed with not having to work tomorrow, so I can hang out and chat a little longer. And